Mitral regurgitation affects about 4 million people in the country. Uh, it is a leaking of the valve between the left ventricle, which is the main pumping chamber in the heart, which is trying to pump blood from the lungs and the left atrium to the brain through the aortic valve. And the mitral valve's job is to prevent blood from going backwards into the left atrium and the lungs. And over time, that can get leaky from various different causes. And when it leaks enough, the lungs can fill with fluid and people can feel short of breath and feel weak and have trouble sleeping due to breathing problems. The worst problem that can develop is congestive heart failure where their, their lungs fill with fluid and they can be very uncomfortable. Typically, mitral regurgitation is treated by a conservative initial strategy where we follow patients with physical exams and ultrasounds and assessment of their symptom and quality of life. Over time, however, the symptoms become more and more pronounced and we need to initiate medications to help the heart pump more efficiently and water medications to get rid of the fluid from the lungs. Over time, however, that becomes less and less successful and you need some sort of structural treatment of the valve. The traditional treatment at the, at the current time is the open surgical repair or replacement of the mitral valve. That involves a sternotomy, which is cutting of the sternum, and then stopping the heart, cardiac arrest, pulling up, uh, connecting the blood vessels to the brain and the rest of the body to an external pump called cardiopulmonary bypass, and then either repairing the valve or taking the valve out and replacing it with a pig or cow uh, tissue valve or a metal prosthesis. And that's a, uh, a relatively large surgery. Patients stay in the hospital for five to seven days. There's about a one to three month recovery period, but an excellent surgery that's done throughout the country every day and has excellent long-term results. Over the last few years, there's been a lot of excitement over more minimally invasive treatments for valvular heart disease. And in this setting, there's a technology called the E-valve mitral clip, which is a percutaneous, meaning it goes through a small incision in the leg, up through the veins into, in your abdomen and thorax and into your heart. And it's a metal clip that repairs the mitral valve and prevents the leaking without an open surgical wound. The difference between a mitral valve clip or a percutaneous mitral valve repair compared to the traditional open heart surgery offers a few advantages. One is that there's of course no sternotomy, so there's no cutting of the sternum, which helps with wound healing and patient recovery. There's no cardiac arrest. You do not stop the heart. This is done, the clipping procedure is done on a beating heart, and that allows us to not use cardiopulmonary bypass, so there's no hooking up the brain and the other blood vessels to an external pump. The disadvantages are the outcomes are unclear in the long term because this is still an experimental procedure and we do not have long term data, but the initial non-randomized data is very promising. We are the only uh, site who is actively enrolling in Northern California and uh, in a non-randomized registry trial that is a FDA approved multi-center trial that is also institutional review board approved for El Camino Hospital. Since percutaneous mitral valve repair is an experimental procedure that's still under an FDA approved study protocol, not every patient will meet the entry criteria for the study. However, there are a multitude of treatment options that are available at El Camino Hospital for patients with symptomatic mitral valve regurgitation.